An oscilloscope is one of the most essential test instruments in the electrical lab. Several manufacturers produce a wide variety of oscilloscopes. Before the advent of digital technology, oscilloscopes were naturally analog based. Mainly, they consisted of analog circuitry and a cathode ray tube display to view the signal. Although these types of oscilloscopes offer their own unique features that can never quite be matched by digital technology, there has been an accelerating trend in the performance of digital oscilloscopes. Choosing the right oscilloscope for your application can be a daunting task. However, at the end of the day, it boils down to value. I'll briefly discuss how to choose the best oscilloscope for your needs and application, so you don't fall victim to the marketing gimmicks and pay for features that you don't really need. Make sure you understand your present and future requirements. These requirements affect how you will choose an oscilloscope based on features such as bandwidth, sampling rate, triggering, number of channels, resolution, and ease of use. Bandwidth of an oscilloscope is perhaps the most important feature to consider. It is advised to use an oscilloscope with, at the very least, a bandwidth of twice the highest frequency you'll need to analyze. But typically, a factor of 5 or 10 is recommended. Additionally, you must also consider the rise and fall time of the signals that you will analyze. For example, a clock signal might only be 100 kilohertz, but it might have a rise and fall time of 10 nanoseconds. In this case, you really need a bandwidth of at least 100 megahertz if you wish to adequately resolve the timing of these transitions. The bandwidth determines the maximum frequency that the oscilloscope circuitry is able to capture with fidelity. On the other hand, the sampling rate determines the time resolution of the oscilloscope. Most oscilloscopes specify a real-time sampling rate. For example, an oscilloscope with a real-time sampling rate of 100 megahertz, or 100 megasamples per second, is able to resolve signals at a time resolution of 10 nanoseconds. Some oscilloscopes take advantage of the periodic nature of signals to provide a time resolution that is actually much smaller. This is known as effective time sampling, or ETS. If the oscilloscope in the previous example implemented this feature, it might be able to produce a time resolution of, say, one nanosecond, or even better, assuming that the signal is periodic. Triggering options of an oscilloscope must also be considered. This is essential to how you view the signal being analyzed. Almost all oscilloscopes will include an external trigger, for example, from a function generator, and channel-based triggering, such as triggering on a voltage level or a rising edge of your signal. There are other options such as single, normal, and auto modes that you can investigate that might be useful for your specific application. The majority of oscilloscopes come with two channels as standard. This is sufficient in most typical cases. However, it is possible that you may need more channels, depending on your specific application. Usually, 8 bits of resolution is quite sufficient. For example, on a 1 volt range, 8 bits amounts to a resolution of less than 4 millivolts. Usually, other factors, such as noise and the purity of the signal itself, are more important than the extra bits of resolution that an oscilloscope may offer. The definition of ease of use can vary across different users or settings. For example, some users may be willing to sacrifice performance for a more portable or maybe lower cost oscilloscope. For others, the user interface or maybe more additional powerful features may play a bigger role. Neuro oscilloscopes are certain to include spectrum analyzers, onboard memory, and exporting signals maybe to a USB flash drive or a file as standard features. Additionally, logic and protocol analyzers, pattern generators, arbitrary waveform generators, and data recorders are also sometimes offered as upgrade options from some manufacturers. At the end of the day, I suggest you visit each manufacturer's website and evaluate what they offer for demos, and then make a decision based off that. I have been using various types of oscilloscopes from different manufacturers over the last few years, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. Surprisingly, sometimes lower cost oscilloscopes are the better choice. Good luck in your search. Please feel free to use the link below to check out my blog for more information or ask any questions regarding specific oscilloscopes.